How many is glad to be back in the house of the Lord this morning? Amen. Amen. That sounded a little weak, but you know, we can let it slide, I guess. There we go. Sister Martha's fixing to lead y'all. So how many is glad to be in the house of the Lord? Amen. Amen. You know, it, it never ceases to amaze me. Sometimes you, if you're on Facebook and stuff, you'll see this sometimes, but they'll show a big picture of a, a ball game stadium packed full of people. Huh? Yeah, I did. I didn't know you had. And then you'll see, a, I don't know, something else. You'll see a, a ball game stadium. You'll see a big restaurant or something. You'll see all this stuff that's packed full of people. And then at the bottom, you'll see a picture of a church with like 10 people in it. Problem is, a lot of the ones that's in the ball stadium professes to be Christians. Well, why ain't they in the house of the Lord? Because they're more excited to be at a ball game than they are to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. You know, that ball game's not going to get you into heaven. That ball game's not going to teach you how to live a righteous life. And that ball game is not going to teach you how to live and walk and talk in, spirit, in the Spirit. It'll make you feel good for a little while, but the Holy Ghost is going to make you feel good all the time. Amen. Amen. Yes, so if you've got your Bibles, let's go to Galatians chapter 5. As you're turning, I want to say, say thank you. I can't talk this morning. Uh, I want to say thank you for being here this morning. Thank you for making God and church a priority. But I want to ask you a question. You ain't got to answer to me. Answer to yourself. How many of you here is happy? I'm happy to be here. Happy to be here. <laughs> How many is just happy, period? Uh, there is joy. It's not up there now. It'll be back in a minute. There's joy in being led. Now, there's, there's people in this world, some are leaders and some are followers. That ain't what I'm talking about. I'm talking about Jesus. I'm talking about the Holy Ghost leading us in everything that we say and that we do. And we should be joyful that He's doing it. But see, we find this division in Christianity. There's the, uh, there's the, the Henry Meltons. He's always happy, always full of joy, bouncing around everywhere. I might be a little jealous. I don't know. I don't have that much energy now. And I'm half his age. Jumping around, he's happy. He's full of the joy, right? Yes, yes. And then you've got your hee-haw Christians. <laughs> Gloom, despair, and agony on me. I'm led of the Spirit. If you're a true Christian, then you're led of the Spirit. And you should have joy in being led. Yes. If there is no joy in you from being led by the Spirit, then you're not being led by the Spirit. You're being led by the devil. He will bring you gloom, despair, and agony. He will bring you unrest. He will bring you anger. He will bring you the opposite of happy and joy. Whatever that is. Sadness. Despair. That's what the devil brings. False hope. False hope. But when we're led of the Spirit, folks, when we're led of the Spirit, there should be joy. Amen? Amen. I mean, if, if you look at me as, as some type of a leadership in your life, and if you accept me as your pastor, then that puts me in a leadership position in your life. That's not the same type of being led. It's what I want to talk about today. Okay, I'm a person. I can mess up. I can give you advice sometimes that might not be the right advice, because I'm human. That's not my desire to give you false advice or wrong advice. But it's possible, because I'm human. But whenever you come to the Holy Ghost, He will never lead you astray. He's always there with you. He's never going to put you in a place that you can't uh, be prosperous. Amen. Okay? You, you, sometimes we get into positions and we're like, how in the world did I get here? Well, if you got there on your own, that's the answer. You did it to yourself. 
But if the Holy Spirit led you into that place, into that time, into that season of your life, into that situation or whatever's going on, if the Holy Ghost led you there, it was for a purpose. It was for a reason. And He's going to use you. And even though it might get hard, even though it might seem like a sad situation or a hard situation, if the Holy Ghost led you there, there's something to be joyful about because the Holy Ghost is going to use you to do a mighty work. I learned this a long time ago. Amen. Amen. And it echoes back. The Holy Ghost will use you if you'll let Him. So I find joy in being led by the Spirit. So if you've got your Bibles, let's stand. Let's go to Galatians chapter 5. And start at verse 16. Verse 16 says, This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. That's not a question. It means what it says. Walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. But if ye be led of the Spirit, ye are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, adultery, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like. Of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in, the, in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. And they that are Christ's have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. Amen. Father, I just ask right now that whatever is said today, Lord, uh, be of you. Lead me, Lord, in speaking today, Lord. Let it come out of my mouth everything that would be pleasing to you and be a benefit and a blessing to somebody here today. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. Amen. All right, you can be seated. Now, Verse 16 is good. Verse 16 says again, Walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Well, when are we going to fulfill the lust of the flesh? When we don't walk in the Spirit. Does that ever happen? Let's be real. Yeah. If you're in here today and you say, I ne Pastor, I never get in the flesh. Come tell me that in private, and I'll call you a liar in private. Tell me that in public and I'll call you a liar in public. Amen. There we go. This is reality. We're in a fleshly body. We ain't perfect. Well, I, I just don't believe you. I don't get in the flesh. You never got so mad you can't stand it? You never badmouth somebody behind their back? You never got... Oh, Lord, I shouldn't say that word. You never gossiped? Jumped on the telephone? You know, I, I don't know what's in y'all's life, but I do know that you're all human beings and you're all in a fleshly body. And we have a fleshly mind. And we're all tempted. We all have things that we have to deal with. And in those moments, sooner or later, if we're not really careful, we're going to get in the flesh. Walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. But here's the part that gets me. Verse 17. That this is reality. Okay? For the flesh lusteth against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other. Listen to this part. So that ye cannot do the things that ye would. I've heard a lot of weird stuff taught on that right there. The flesh and the Spirit are at war. Right? Yes. The flesh 
as Christians, we're a new creature. That old man is in the past. That old man is gone. Right? But he's always trying to come back. That's where the spirit is always wrestling with the flesh. The flesh is trying to come back and say, I want to be active in your life again. And the spirit is saying, no, you can't. Okay? We've got to be subject one, uh, to one of those natures. We become a new creature, then we're in the divine nature. That's how we need to live. That's how we need to operate. But there's always going to be that war between the flesh and the spirit wanting to be in control. Who gets to choose which one's in control? We do. I do. So when you get in the flesh, do not tell me it's ordained of God for me to get in the flesh at this moment. Okay? If they choose to be ignorant of the Word of God, then let them be ignorant. God does not ordain you to sin. He sent Jesus to die to pay for the sin so that you don't have to pay that price anymore. He told the woman who was accused of adultery uh, after he rode in the sand there and all of her accusers left and he said, where's those that accuse you? And she said, I have none. He said, well, I'm not going to accuse you either, but what I am going to tell you is this, go and sin no more. That's what he told her. Jesus didn't say go and, and don't sin until I ordain you to sin. He said go and sin no more. I've already, I'm, I'm here to pay the price for this. So your job is to live in the Spirit, to walk in the Spirit, and don't be committing the lust of the flesh. Don't be com committing sins. If you do, because I know you're human and you're not perfect, I, Jesus, am the advocate, and you can just repent. And you pick up and you go on. People get hung up in that area and it's nothing to get hung up about. If you get in the flesh, you can't do the things of the Spirit. And if you're in the Spirit, you can't do the things of the flesh. But it's whenever you take your eyes and you focus on one of the two, that's what you're going to do. Okay? So we have two natures. We have a sin nature and we have a divine nature. Second Peter 1 and 4 says, Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises. We stop right there a lot because that's good stuff. I love that part. He has given us exceeding great and precious promises. I love it. We're recipients of that. They're to us, right? But the rest of it says that by these, by these exceeding great and precious promises, you might be partakers of the divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust, that is in the world through sin. Okay? We've escaped it through the divine nature that Jesus paid for. He made it possible. Not us. Not our good works and not our good deeds. Not our thoughts. Not all the stuff that we've, we, we want to do. But Jesus already paid for it. Done. That's the part I like. It's freely given. Jesus already paid for it. And these exceeding great and precious promises, these fall under the, the umbrella of grace. We serve a gracious God, folks. Amen. You know, we got into this a little bit in discipleship this morning. Uh, before we become Christians, this old fleshly body, there was nothing about it good. Right. Nothing about us good. But before we was even born, God's already extended His grace upon us. He did that with Jesus on the cross because of that grace. So it, it's a power struggle, folks. We won't get into it today, but if you want to read a little more about this, you can go to Romans chapter 7 and verse 15, and it kind of gets into that. Let's just do it. Go to Romans chapter 7. Instead of just telling you what gets confusing about it, let's just jump in there. You want to? Romans chapter 7, verse 15. How great it is to be led by the Spirit and not by the flesh. How many of you in here can say that you are led of the Spirit? That was a little weaker than I was hoping it would be. 
If it was that loud for how many is led by the Spirit, how many of us are led by the flesh? Okay. That sounded better. All right. Well, let's jump right in here. Romans chapter 7, verse 15. It says, For that which I do, I allow not. I'm going to read it slow. This, this is hard to chew on sometimes. Amen. All right. Right, uh, right now, we're, we're going into Romans chapter 7, verse 15. For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that I do. Or that do I. That makes a lot of people scratch their heads. Okay? And it, it can get confusing if we let it happen. For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that do I. If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it, that it is good. Now then, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. Okay, this is not the time that we get a free pass to blame everything that we do on the devil. Okay, it's not the devil's fault we did it, we did it. We made the choice. Okay? For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For to will, for to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. For the good that I would, I do not. But the evil which I would not, that I do. Now if I do that which I would not, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. That's where we started in Galatians chapter 5. There's always this war between the flesh and the spirit. Okay? When we're walking in the spirit, the flesh is put on the back burner. But when we take our eyes off Jesus, like Peter did when he was walking on the water, he was on the water. He was walking on the water just fine. Didn't matter how big the waves were and how rough the water was. When he was walking on the water, he was just fine as long as he was looking at Jesus. But when he took his eyes off Jesus and looked at the world around him, he started to sink. His faith faltered at that moment because he changed his focus. Well, that's what's going on right here. Verse uh, 21, I find then a law 